Welcome to my presentation about embedded computer vision. I'm very pleased to talk about one of my favorite topics today in this tech talk. First of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Clemens Reisner. I'm an embedded systems expert and team lead of the computer vision team at Mission Embedded, and I'm working there since 2014. Mission Embedded is a member of the Frequentis Group, is located in Vienna, but we also have an office in Linz, and we currently employ about 75 highly qualified engineers. Mission Embedded is your partner and expert when it comes to embedded solutions in sectors like um, transportation, railway, industry, um, medical devices, and also when it comes to air traffic management. And we design and deliver highly customized products for our customers. We support them during production and during life cycle. I want to conclude the company presentation with our mission statement, and it is we embed advanced technologies like ears, eyes, voice, and a brain, especially into the products of our customer. And it gives a nice summary of um, the, the core technologies we deal and where we have experience, like sensor technology, wireless communication, safety and security, um, also about um, computer vision, artificial intelligence, deep learning, and all of this in the context of embedded systems. So what is embedded computer vision? Um, most of you might use embedded computer vision systems all the day. So one example, um, if you enter a modern car park, there's most probably already an automated license plate reader equipped with a camera. And this camera recognizes your license plate of your car. And when you want to leave again the car park, it automatically opens the barrier, for example. Or you already have a very modern car which is equipped with an emergency brake assistance system. So this is typically a camera behind the windshield uh, monitoring the area um, in front of the vehicle. And in the case of a potential collision, it automatically breaks down your car. But in any case, you will have a mobile phone with a camera. And usually mobile, mobile phones already recognize your face when you want to make a selfie or the face of other people's and automatically adjust the camera settings in a way so that you get the best shot. These are all nice examples, but there are even more embedded computer vision applications out there. So what are the main pillars of embedded computer vision systems? First of all, you need some kind of sensor technology. And in our case, this is typically some kind of imaging sensor or a camera. And then you need an embedded system to, on one hand, receive the data from the sensor and to process it. Um, for processing, we need computer vision algorithms. These are algorithms which extract useful image information. And if you want to build a really smart computer vision algorithm, you need some kind of artificial intelligence or deep learning algorithms. And finally, to train these algorithms and to test your complete computer vision system, you need a lot of training and test data. OK, let's jump into the details. Imaging sensors enable us to see our environment. Um, our whole world works through visual perception. Imagine you would like to cross a pedestrian crossing somewhere. You first of all have to recognize the markings on the street. Then you most probably have to look on a traffic signal somewhere. And if there's no traffic signal, you have to look on the left on the right side and check if a car is coming. You need to track them with your eyes. You have to estimate the speed and make a wise decision. All this can be done with imaging sensors. And imaging sensors today are very cheap. They are small, and this means they are omnipresent. In nearly every dig uh, digital or electronic product out there in the consumer world, there are now cameras included. But there's also a major drawback. Image processing is very CPU intensive. For this, we need embedded systems. And embedded systems are a tailored computer system, to summarize it. Yeah? So this means we have a custom set of interfaces in such a system. Usually, embedded systems have to deal with some kind of constraints like resources or power, and they have to operate 24-7 in a harsh environment. Usually, they are designed to meet certain application requirements, and of course, all customers want cost-optimized hardware. But the most important point is that the embedded systems have to provide enough computational power so that we can execute the computer vision algorithms on them. These algorithms help us to perceive the environment. And in this algorithm, it's um, about extracting useful information from raw image data. 
And when designing and developing such algorithms, it's always important to have the specific goal in mind and to really understand what we need to do. Experts in this area need to know how to professionally develop software. They need to have some experience with sensor technology or with cameras. Um, they need to do um, pre-processing for images and videos. Um, as mentioned before, they need to understand the use case and the function to be achieved. And finally, of course, they need to implement, optimize and test all these algorithms. And if you really want to master this area, you also need to know something about artificial intelligence and deep learning. Artificial intelligence and deep learning is a big hype. Everyone talks about it at the moment. And most often people do not really know what it is, but most of the time, especially in the area of computer vision, um, we mean deep learning algorithms. Deep learning has contributed over the last few years to great achievements in the area of computer vision. And it made many applications possible, which were not feasible at all a few years ago. Most of the time we use here supervised learning algorithms so this means we expose these algorithms to some kind of training data in an offline phase. And once we achieved a certain accuracy, we deploy these algorithms to our um, embedded systems. And then they perform real-time inference um, in the scope of our customer product. Yeah, data is the new oil. So this is a statement of a British engineer and he become very famous with it. And he was right. <laughs> So at Mission Embedded, for each use case we would like to address, um, we have to conduct a, a customized data recording campaign. And this usually means that we have to build a, a tailored sensor setup for a special vehicle or a construction machine or whatever use case we have in mind. Um, we need to deal with a custom environment, like to be outdoor or inside a cabin with high and low temperatures. And the data recording campaign has also uh, always to consider different algorithms we want to target with it. And finally, after the data is collected, we need to annotate it. So this means we need to place nice bounding boxes around objects we are interested in. We need to perform quality checks on the data and all of this costs a lot of money and effort. But it's very crucial for all embedded computer vision projects. Now let's have a look on a typical computer vision project. So first of all, usually someone has to come up with a good idea. <laughs> In our case, it's usually a customer who wants to innovate one of his products or he has a great new idea of what he can, could achieve in his company. He comes up to our sales engineers and together we work um, in a brainstorming session about potential ways how we could address his idea. Once we agree, um, we start the proof of concept phase or proof of concept project where we use pre-existing building blocks at Mission Embedded like hardware platforms we already have or existing software modules and to try to put everything together, hack some Python scripts around them and make as soon as possible a first customer demonstration. Together with the customer, we try to find out the weaknesses and strangers of this approach. And if the customer is happy and we agree, we start an industrialization phase. In the industrialization, we develop a tailor-made hardware platform for our customer. So this usually means we gather all these requirements mentioned before and really nail it down to what he needs. And once the hardware is there, we start to port all these um, software modules onto this new hardware platform. And this most often also means to re-implement them in C or C++ so they are really optimized for the target platform. When we do this, we also consider some standards like security and safety and apply common processes so that we get a high quality product by end of the day. Usually this phase ends by delivering a first series to our customer and now he is able to innovate with our subsystem within his own product. But also in, in this phase then we support our customer with for example lifecycle management, um, continuous product improvement and bug fixing. This figure shows a typical computer vision architecture. So we have a system which is built up from several software components shown in gray and also hardware components shown in blue. And all these blocks together usually form a so-called image processing pipeline. A pipeline is a common um, pat architectural pattern in computer vision and it means that some kind of data is processed step by step. Okay, let's start in the bottom left corner of this figure. So we have a sensor which provides us some input data. And on top of that, there is a software module which handles the image acquisition. The data, the raw data is forwarded to the next node, which 
perform some pre-processing. And in this step, it is about getting the best out of the raw data. So this could mean that, first of all, we have to apply some demos eking filter on the raw data or make some tone mapping or correct some colors just to get the best out of the picture. In the next phase, we apply a sequence of computer vision algorithms. In this example here, this could be a feature extraction algorithm. And in the next step, for example, a high level algorithm which tracks these features. In another example, these two steps could be replaced by a convolutional neural network, which performs all these tasks in a single step. But by end of the day, we need to do something with the derived information. And this is done by the business logic. You have to imagine in each use case, we have to do something different with the information we have from an image or an image sequence. This is done by the business logic. And finally, we need to take some action. And therefore, we again need a hardware interface so that we can communicate with our environment or with a subordinated system. All the software blocks are executed on our customized hardware. And it usually contains a set of CPU cores or other hardware accelerators like a GPU or neural network accelerators. To finalize the technical part of my presentation, um, I would like to give you an overview of about our technology stack. And I would like first to start with the programming languages. As mentioned before, for the optimized algorithms, we heavily rely on C and C++. It's quite common in the embedded world. But for rapid prototyping, um, Python is now um, very famous and we use it as much as possible. Around that, of course, we use a lot of shell script and many of our embedded systems um, already contain a web interface. That's why I also listed TypeScript and Java here, but we also use JavaScript and all the famous web development frameworks and databases in the background. And with our customers, we usually talk in requirements <laughs> and that's why I listed it here. When it comes to software frameworks, we use a very broad range of frameworks. First of all, our embedded systems usually run with Linux. And this means on one hand that we use standard distribution where it's possible, but from time to time we build custom distributions with Vyokta. Also from time to time it's needed to rely on a real-time operating system, but all these um, operating systems have in common that we use a Unix-like build environment with bash, CMake, make files, unit testing, automated testing, and, and all that stuff. When it comes to computer vision, of course, we use common libraries for um, rapid prototyping, like OpenCV, the robot operating system, or the point cloud processing library. But in the industrialization phase, we usually re-implement the algorithm specific for our hardware platform. When it comes to multimedia streaming or processing, we use GStream and FFmpeg. And of course, um, everybody knows them, the famous deep learning frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow, and ONNX. And everything is surrounded by a nice development infrastructure based on Microsoft Azure and the Docker registry, and Jenkins build server, and all the um, um, widely used Git tools. Our hardware engineers typically work with Altium Designer, Hyperlink Simulation, and SolidWorks for construction, and they support us by um, making high-speed designs. They help us during rapid prototyping in the proof of concept phase. And when it comes to serious products, they support in the EMC laboratory for pre-qualification and certification of our products. To finalize my presentation, I would like to give you an insight how it is to work at Mission Embedded and why I enjoy it so much. More and more products include embedded computer vision. And for me, this is a really great opportunity to work as developer with bleeding edge technologies. And in our everyday work, we try to combine multiple technical disciplines to solve exciting tasks. And me and my team, we're working together in a flexible environment and always try to achieve um, together a solution for our customer. We are a young team and constantly growing. And by the way, we're always looking for support. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this tech talk and thank you very much for your time.